Hello, my name is Quinn, my pronouns are they, them, and welcome to my channel, Lucid Moons. So excited to have you here. We are moving right along. We are continuing to look at my indie tarot deck collection. Thank you for joining me on this journey, kind of looking through my collection, taking stock, seeing how I react, seeing how I feel to all of my decks as 2023 is closing and we're starting 2024. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a low by year in 2024 or a lower by year at least. Um, realistic goals. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of where we are. So um, let's jump right in and start looking at some more indie tarot decks. We're going to start with the Avi, Avi Somnia Tarot by Orla Bird. I just got this one in very recently. I love it. <laughs> These are the backs and let's take a look. This is just a really cool deck that I've wanted for a while. I really dig the minimal color palette. I dig the minim minimalistic imagery and I'm really excited to own this and to work with it. I know the creator is going to be releasing a new edition in 2024. Not sure what changes are going to be made but that's super exciting and I know that the creator is also working on another tarot deck and I think another oracle deck if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm really excited to see all of the things that they put out into the world because I think that they have a really unique and awesome art style. And I'm really excited to pair this deck. I think it's going to pair really well with a couple of my oracles. So yeah, that is the Avisomnia Tarot by Orla Bird. Struggling. Okay. Next up is the Orion's Tarot by Ambi Sun. This is the indie edition. I don't think this edition is has been available for a while. There is a mass market edition that you can easily access though. Um, these are the backs. I have the edition that has this really cool red ruby red gilding, which is so cool. And this is just a really, this is one of my favorite, favorite animal decks. I love animal decks. I think I mentioned that before. Like I'm, I'm a huge fan of animal decks. I love animals. Me and my partner are both obsessed with animals and we like, I mean, we have three dogs and a cat. So <laughs> our house is a zoo, but we also just really like learning about animals, different animal facts and, um, the guidebook I, uh, that, at least the version I have, the indie version, really goes in depth about the choices made for each card. This is a really hard card for me. Um, and I think that uh, Ambi Sun just did an amazing job of choosing animals that were really representative of the different energies of each card. And it's really fun. It's a really cool deck. So yeah, huge fan of that deck. Very well loved by me. That is the Orion's Tarot by Ambi Sun. Next in the lineup, we are looking at the one, the only, the Botan Tarot. Uh, this is by, oh, I showed the wrong side. The Botan Tarot by A. Miyako M. This is an out of print deck. I'm so sorry. But like, sorry not sorry because I worked real hard to get this deck because it was out of print for a while. Um, and then the creator announced that like at some point in the future she was going to be releasing one more print run and I incessantly stalked this creator's Instagram email list website literally for months and then I, as soon as they announced that this was being reprinted I um 
I was probably one of the first people to, to order it. But aren't these backs like fucking gorgeous? I have the kind with the dark bluish purple edges. And this is just, this art takes my breath away. Like it is so beautiful. Um, <laughs> the creator had posted like a little compilation photo of their art and was like, AI could never. And I'm just like, yes, AI could never. Like, it's just so beautiful. It's so charming. And yeah, I'm not to start the AI debate in the comments or anything like that. Like, you do you. But I personally, at least where it's at right now, I just don't like the way it looks. Like, I can tell, I can tell it's AI and it looks weird. It's kind of like Uncanny Valley to me, a lot of AI art. Um, and I just love this. I just love the beauty, the skill required to create art like this. It's unreal. That's my hot take. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the Botan Tarot. The cardstock is that really nice, like, papery. It feels like really nice paper. <laughs> I love her. Oh, my God. She's so gorgeous. And the little babies in the pips are so cute. I love it. It's just so good. I'm, I'm not sure if it'll ever be released again. I feel like, yes, it will eventually. Um, the artist basically said, like, yo, like, I'm an artist and... I have a full-time, like, day job, so I'm not trying to be, like, selling decks <laughs> all the time. I don't got time for that. Um, and I get it. I get it. But it does suck because this is such a pretty deck. Okay, let's move on. Let's take a look at... I keep it in a little pouch. This is the Numinous Tarot by Cedar McLeod. These are the backs. I have an older version that's glossy shiny. You can see she has been well loved. <laughs> uh, this was the first deck that kind of got me back into tarot. I had a couple decks um, when I was like uh, 19 that my mom got for me that I uh, started learning with and it was just like a very occasional practice and then 22 panini i'm sure a lot of people started getting really deep into tarot at that time too i was like looking for a spiritual practice um something to focus on uh, a hobby and tarot just like felt like right for me and i got this deck um i chose it because it was queer and i wanted to at that time i it was really important for me to see myself and my community in the cards as I was learning. Um, and I have no regrets about that. I absolutely love this deck. I think it is incredibly underrated in the community. And Cedar McLeod is just an absolutely amazing, amazing artist and amazing human being. They are so kind. And I, yeah, if you have any interest whatsoever in this deck, I highly recommend, or in any of their decks because they have a few, um, I highly recommend supporting them um, because they're just really, really a lovely human being. I love this. This is a Hierophant card. That's absolutely stunning. Yeah, this deck is like really important to me. It's one that's an, a year rounder for me. It just kind of lives near my desk um, and it speaks to me. It's one of those decks where I, I, I know every card by heart pretty much. Um, and it had a really big role in my journey, uh, with tarot and with spirituality. And I, when I bought this deck, I thought it was going to be nice. I thought it was going to be like kind of sweet and maybe a little bit like loving. <laughs> it's not. This deck fucks me up. This deck bitch slaps me across the face, but it does do it in a loving way and in a really cute way. And yeah, it's super cool. Um, I've heard some people say it looks very like YA novel and I agree and I love that about it because sometimes I think of my life as if I'm living in a dramatic YA novel. <laughs> Just kidding, but seriously. Okay, 
let's take a look at, um, I have a few, actually I have all three of my major only decks um, that I'm going to show you in this video today. So let's check out the first of those. This is um, a deck by a local artist in my in my city. So it's it's a local creator and it is the Sonoran Tarot. I'm not sure, I can't remember if it's the Sonoran Tarot or the Sonoran Desert Tarot, but it's by, let me double check, Karina Moreno. Yeah, Karina Moreno. And it's so pretty. It has a papery linen finish and it depicts um, the Sonoran Desert, which is where I grew up and it's also where I currently live. And it's a very special place to me. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with um, the city itself that I live in and the state itself that I live in. Arizona, <laughs> but um, I do have to say that there's so much beauty in the desert here, and it's one of the most biodiverse deserts in the, in the entire world, and a lot of people, you know, they don't know that, and they, they think of the desert, and they think it's very barren, but here um, in the Sonoran Desert, it's actually full of life, and yes, it's true that that life wants to, like, prick you, stab you, sting you, bite you most of the time, <laughs> but it's still really cool that animals and human beings have lived here for, you know, forever and are able to withstand like such a harsh environment. And this deck is just a really beautiful celebration of the place I live and it helps me see the beauty in, in the desert, because when it's like 117 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer and you can't go outside and you can't do anything and you're just stuck inside in the AC and you hate your life, like it can be hard to appreciate the desert in those times. You know what I mean? It can be hard <laughs> when you have seven months of like summer every single year. Yeah, it can be a little challenging, <laughs> but the desert is a very beautiful place and I have to say when it rains here it's like the most beautiful beautiful thing in the entire world I swear there's nothing more delicious than the desert when it rains um this is another majors only deck this is the Capri Moon Tarot by Mech M-E-C this is a majors only deck. I got this on Etsy. I thought it was just really cute. Once again, these are my favorite colors, pink, purple, and blue. Did I mention I'm a Capricorn? <laughs> and obviously this is a character like, you know, based on a little, a little Capricorn girl or goat, little goat girl. And I think it's so fun. It's so cute. Um, I haven't, I, I, I've played with it a little bit. I haven't quite found its purpose. Y'all know these majors only decks can be a little tricky. Um, in general, I tend to um, pair them with other tarot. This one's a little tricky to pair though, I have to say. So I don't know. I'm just really glad to have it because I think it's super fun. And it has this like really cool, it's like slightly shiny, glittery, but also papery cardstock and... I love it. It's the Capri Moon Tarot by Mac. I got it on Etsy. Okay. Next up, we are going to... Oh, wait. Just kidding. I have one more majors only deck to show. This is the Tarot by Naoshi. I got this at a local record store. I had never heard of it before, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Uh, and then I looked at it, and I was like, yep, I need this. <laughs> this needs to be in my life right now. So it's glossy. It's gigantic card sock. But, and um, this is a, a Japanese creator, which definitely looks very Japanese. Um, I believe now she is based out of L.A., but they are from Japan, and they create this artwork using sand, using colored sand. And I think that is just so awesome. I love the little crazy animals. There's so much to look at. So many little wacky guys in all the cards. 
and I just it's so fun obviously it's very RWS clone um <laughs> they're eating ramen I don't know it's just it's so good it's just so good yeah this is the Naoshi this is the Terra by Naoshi I'm sorry if I'm spelling that or pronouncing it wrong okay let's move along so those are my three majors only decks um yeah, I tend to either like pair them with another tarot deck usually or the desert one. I've been using that one as like a monthly draw, just like a single card draw. And I really like it for that practice. Um, so that's kind of how I tend to use those decks. But if you have any ways that you like to use majors only decks, um, any suggestions, definitely let me know in the comment section. Um, this is Smoke, Ash, and Embers. I always get the names mixed up. <laughs> I have both. Um, this is Smoke, Ash, and Embers by Three Trees. Oh my god, they really like to pack these decks in there very tightly in their boxes. Okay. I got both of these decks, um, this one and Oak, Ash, and Thorn, which I think you're going to see in the next video. Um, I, I thought I was going to like Oak, Ash, and Thorn more, but this one just really was a standout deck for me this year. I did one reading in particular with this deck that just rocked my world. It slapped me so hard <laughs> and in the best way. And it told me exactly what I needed to hear. It was such a clear reading, it was so powerful. The messages I got were just so on point. And it's funny because um, I draw an animal card. I, draw, I do a monthly animal oracle card draw, um, but also I also do one for the entire year and the, animal I got this year was dragon okay so I never was like super like a particularly dragony person before like I didn't dislike them I thought they were cool but I just didn't really like think about them too often but this year I really like embraced that dragon energy and I got really into dragons this year and I knew I wanted to get this deck because before I wasn't sure about it I knew I wanted to get this deck and oh boy am I so glad I did these dragons are so freaking cute. They're so adorable. Like, I feel like that's what's missing from a lot of the other dragon decks that I've personally seen on the market is the dragons are like super serious all the time. And I want my dragons to be really cute sometimes and playful and cuddly and sweet. And like, wow, that one's not cute or cuddly or playful or sweet obviously but these ones are um and I just <laughs> I just love it I love the world that they have created in these decks I'm a huge fan I will purchase probably every deck that um three trees tarot's comes out with um so yeah All right, it's just taking me a moment to like squeeze the cards into the box. Tight fit. Okay, boom. Next up. Oops, this is the Somnia Tarot by Nicholas Bruno. This is one that was on my list forever. I finally pulled the plug um, for spooky season. I got this. I'm so glad I did. This was another standout deck for me this year. Just really, really enjoy it. Um... I have a huge appreciation for the effort that it took to create and photograph these scenes. I think it's absolutely just so cool, so impressive. I love the weirdness, the creepiness. Um, as I'm sure everyone already knows, it's based on the creator's experience with sleep paralysis um, and other sleep issues. And while I don't personally struggle with sleep paralysis, look at this moon card. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Well, I don't personally struggle with sleep paralysis specifically. I do struggle with night terrors. And luckily, I'm finally at a point in my life where they don't happen super often anymore. But for most of my life, I have struggled with really bad night terrors um, that actually started when one of my dogs died when I was 10 years old. Um, and they say it can be triggered by traumatic events. So, um, yeah. So I, and I had like sleepwalking, sleep talking, a lot of other just like weird sleep issues. Um, and I still experience them, them. I still experience them from time to time. Sorry guys. I'm having a little bit of a hard time formulating words and sentences right now. I think cause I'm a little bit stuffed up. Um, 
But yeah, so I really can kind of relate to the premise of this deck and I think it's just a really, really clear reader for me and it's just, ooh, I just really loved working with this one this year. It was one of my favorites. So that is the Somnia Tarot. Okay, let's tackle this one. <laughs> this is the El Goliath Tarot by El Goliath. And I've had this deck for a couple years. Um, I never really fully connected with it. And this October, I tried more to work with it. And I didn't really, it didn't really work for me. Um, I guess we are upside down. It didn't really work for me. Um, I didn't connect. The messages just weren't coming through. Um, but I was, I think it's beautiful. Like, objectively, it's beautiful. I love the dark theme. Um... I love the confronting imagery. I was still gonna keep it though because I think it's really dope and I wanted to like, you know, I wasn't in a rush. I wanted to give it give it time. And unfortunately, I learned via a tarot tuber who was supporting what this deck creator was saying. The tarot tuber reshared a video of this deck creator who apparently has a podcast. And I saw the title and I was like, what the fuck? And then I went and I looked at the video and I, trust me, I did not watch the whole thing. It was like over an hour long, but I, I listened to the beginning, the first few minutes of it. And he just immediately started going on like a transphobic rant talking about how um, transgender women are actually just men that want to hurt women, want to try to steal womanhood away from women and, you know, how people can't deny their biological gender and i was like really disappointed um that the creator of this deck that i owned was really deeply transphobic and spreading really hateful messages and honestly misinformation about transgender people online and it was also hurtful that the tarot tuber um was in support of what uh the really disgusting and hateful uh things that this creator was saying it's hard for me, per this is me, this is just me personally, it's hard for me to separate art from the artist, personally. I'm not saying anyone else has to do the what I do or has to think what I think. You live your life, you do whatever the fuck you want. If you absolutely love this deck and you don't give a fuck, that's awesome. But for me personally, as soon as I learned that, I was like, I don't want this near me. I don't want this in my collection. Knowing that it was created by someone that hates me, that hates my partner, that hates my friends, that hates my community, and who thinks that we don't have the right to exist in this world. It really hurts, it hurts. So I'm gonna be moving this one on. I don't think I'm gonna even take the time to like sell it on Facebook or anything like that. I really don't care about making money from it. I'm probably just gonna trade it in at like my local buy sell trade store and either get a little bit of cash or a little bit of credit store credit for it and yeah I, I can't stand behind anyone spreading that type of hate um against my loved ones so next up we're gonna move right along this is the stolen child tarot by monica l knighton this is such a cool deck um these are the backs they are so lovely. This is an absolutely beautiful deck. Um, it was created based on the poem, I believe called The Stolen Child. And I'm, I'm gonna butcher this, but the premise behind it is that, you know, the world is filled with so many horrors and so many bad things. Um, and if only the children could be stolen away by fairies and taken to live out in nature and so that they will never have to experience 
all of the horrors of the world. They won't have to lose their innocence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get what I'm saying. Um, and this is just really, this is like an, a reimagining of what that would look like of these children that have been stolen away by the Fae that are living out in this magical nature realm, living in harmony with animals. Um, some of them even shape shifting into animals or into different aspects of nature. It's just really cool. It very much uh, goes its own way from the RWS or any other traditional imagery and I love it. It's one of the first decks I've owned that really has pushed my me to use my intuition and I just really like it so much. Look at this beautiful ace of oak or ace of pentacles so pretty so that is the stolen child tarot by monica knighton that one is definitely a favorite in my collection without a doubt all right we are moving along let's look at another oh i'm sorry this is another out of print deck this is the lubanko tarot by e lubanko Wow, I can't say enough things about this deck. It's, like, freaking amazing. Um, I'm sorry it's it's out of print, um, but the artist has said that anytime they've tried to work with publishing companies, they're, they've been asked to censor and change their artwork, and they're not willing to do that. And, wow, so much respect for that. And please don't change this artwork. It is absolutely beautiful and absolutely perfect just the way it is. It is... A, a masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, Ilu Banco is another queer and non-binary artist. Um, and this deck is, it feels very dark. It feels very sexy. It feels very queer. And I personally think it is fantastic. Um, it Some of the cards are more um, traditional depiction of of the meaning of the card and some of them are really kind of out there a lot of them bring out the shadow side or the shadow meanings of the cards and I think it's really cool to have a deck like that that really makes you think about the cards in a different way and in a very confronting way like this deck is extremely confronting but it's also so beautiful love this lover's card one of my favorites ever. And yeah, I'm really enamored with this art style. It is both polished and sketchy. And it really conveys movement and emotion. And yeah, it's just one of my favorite decks ever definitely top five of all time that is the lubanko tarot okay we only have a few left um this is the four hoxa tarot by mj Kulinane. this is the indie edition it's now no longer available in India as far as I know, and it's out on the mass market. So that's super exciting. Um, I wanted to snatch the indie version though because I like the card stock better. I don't love the um, card stock on MJ Clinning's mass market decks. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not the best. Um, and this was another favorite for me in 2023. I really just had a great time working with this. Um, it, I think I worked with it back in April and it felt really good for like Aries vibes, you know? And also that spring fairy fae kind of energy. I wasn't unsure if I was gonna like it cause some of the faces are, <laughs> I can't remember who said it. Um, I'm so sorry if you're watching this, you know who you are. They mentioned that the faces are very uncanny valley and that is so accurate. They are a little bit uncanny valley kind of weird but I, I kind of had to like take a step back and like take in the whole experience of the card and it's really a beautiful deck um and I really enjoy it the guidebook uh, like I think all of her guidebooks are done in like 
a narrative style, which is really fun. And I think that MJ has done a great job of creating this really beautiful world with fairies and mermaids and animals and bugs. Uh-oh, the spider, spider arachnophobes are going to have a heart attack, but I like spiders. We have one in our house and we just let him, we just let her remain. She's part of the family. <laughs> she's not like a venomous kind or anything. She's, she's just chilling. She's helping eat little buggies. You know, we don't bother her. She doesn't bother us. <laughs> okay. I only have two more to go. This is the Desert Illuminations Tarot by Lindsay Williams. This, I don't know what edition. It's an earlier edition. Um, I've edged mine in purple. And this is one of my faves as well. This is another one that's no longer available indie, but I think I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to go mass market hopefully soon. It's such a good deck. It's so fun, it's cheeky, it's funny, it doesn't take itself seriously. It um, has cultural references to the different um, cultures of the American Southwest. It has aliens because, you know, it's, the deck creator is based out of New Mexico, so it is, it does lean heavy to New Mexico, but it also just has like an overall American Southwest slash Wild West vibe to it. Um, it's got cowboys, it's got Native American people, it has traditional Mexican symbols and cultural references. It's just so good. It's so good. It's It feels like home, you know, like I said, I'm born and raised in Arizona. Um, and it just, yeah, there's a lot of historical and pop cultural references that I, I wasn't even getting until I actually read the guidebook and I was like oh my god this is even better than I thought <laughs> so this is the desert illuminations tarot by Lindsay D Williams okay I have one deck left to show you for this batch and wow we had some favorites in this video I have to say I had some like standout favorites of my indie tarot collection this is the Children of Litha Tarot by Zia Hunt. I'm a huge fan of Zia Hunt. This is the only deck I currently own, um, but I am considering the Children oh, Children of Ostara when it comes out, just because this one's more animal based. That one's more plants. I'm definitely more of an animal person, but I just I love Zia Hunt's artwork. Like it's just unreal it's so beautiful I love the guidebook for this deck it has little poems for each card the ones in the majors are a little longer poems the minors are like really short little blips um I love this fast the majors are mostly human and animal hybrids the miners are all animals and they correspond with the element of each suit. So cups are like water animals, swords are like birds and air animals, uh, pentacles are hooved animals, and the uh, wands are predators. And I think that's just really cool. I love that kind of consistency throughout. And then the courts are just people, but they look like they each belong to like a similar clan or a family um which i think is so cool there are some really confronting images in this deck of people slaughtering animals which i don't like like the knights are all like slaughtering dragons or something like that and the emperor too is like slaughtering an animal i that is hard for me to look at but I can forgive it because like, are you kidding me? This is so pretty. And yeah, there are some other just really dark and confronting images in this deck. But like I said, I like to have a balance, you know. I love this page of swords. 
a truly talented artist, I must say. This is The Children of Litha Tarot by Zia Hunt. All right, y'all. So that is going to do it for today. Thank you so, so much for watching, for sticking around with me. It's been a lot of fun so far. We're going to keep going. Um, I'm going to have one more video of Indie Tarot coming out very soon. And then we will be seeing my Oracle deck collection early in 2024. Hopefully, I think, <laughs> depending on my schedule. But um, it would be so, so awesome if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe if you liked what you saw and want to see more content like this. And yeah, wherever you are, whoever you are, I hope that the rest of your day is filled with so much joy and so much magic. Bye!